Okay. All right, guys. Turn into another long video, um, but hopefully this helps, Brian. And I wanted to make sure I just kind of played it for you so you could hear what it's like and then where it's uh, fit in at and then where you can have fun with it. So then that way you can just kind of make it your own, you know. Um, so this is by no means saying like it has to be played this way or anything like that. I'm just trying to show how you can use the one pedal to your advantage and phrase it in different ways and either use toe ball, using a feathering motion where it's all in the ankle motion, keeping your ankle as low to the pedal as possible but still heel up, um, or playing on the toes, you know, and pointing down on the toes. I, I, uh, I see a lot of people play like that. I don't really highly recommend it where, you know, your foot is basically doing like a this kind of thing, you know, where it's pointed and pushing down on the pedal like this. It's better to have your foot in a flat position because any ankle movement you make will translate into the pedal better. If you stick your foot straight down, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get doubles out in the right way because the way you're trying to play doubles is by pointing your toe twice rather than doing a toe ball, toe ball toe ball, which will make for a much more articulate double, um, you know, and I've heard people complain that, like, I have a Speed Cobra, um, Iron Cobras, um, DWs, DW5000, um, DW3000 for my student kits and that kind of stuff, and even people playing on really good pedals, they're like, well, this is really hard to do a double on. And what I've noticed is because I see their foot pointing straight down and they're trying to play the pedal everything they play with their toes. So if you play everything with your toes, you have to raise your leg up to get that double each time rather than doing it in one fluid motion with only one leg raise. So, you know, it, there's anatomical reasons, you know. Our joints work in the same, in, in the same way. Our fingers only bend in a certain way, you know, um, playing with the wrist and fingers, that's why that's so important with German grip, and even with French grip, you're playing fingers, you know, if you're using power stroke and using a lot of energy in everything you play, you're going to get tired faster, um, you're going to injure yourself, because all the shock is going to go up into your hand rather than letting it stick down. So when I do this, all the shock, see how the stick just bounces right back up into my hand without me having to guide the stick back up into my hand? That's what I mean. So sometimes I see people playing like this. Now all that shock is going straight up into your fingers, your wrist, your hand your joints, and believe me, eventually you'll get tendonitis or joint problems or something like that if you keep doing that um, through the longevity of your whole career of drumming. So, um, just things I found along the way, and by no means do I claim that I'm the end-all, be-all of instruction or anything like that. I just like sharing information and then showing the different ways that I learn those things and the reasons why I learned them just because of, you know, certain shortcomings that I have as a drummer um, and wanting to work on those and make sure that, you know, even if there are certain things I struggle with with my legs and my back and that kind of stuff, that I can still at least, you know, hold a groove down and I might have to simplify the bass drum a little bit just so that I don't risk, you know, my legs misfiring at, at the wrong time, but I'm still able to play them, you know, um, and get get the the main groove down and get the bass line down so that everyone can follow along with what's being played so all right guys just a you know talking video and I try to sprinkle them in with some lesson videos and uh, playing videos and that kind of stuff so that way there's a little more variety and you just don't hear you know me and Cameron jamming out or me just freestyling or that kind of stuff so that way there's some useful instruction and in stuff too Okay, guys, um, love all you. Thank you guys so much for um, the subs and um, people coming. And um, uh, Zach, I, I highly respect you, my friend. Um, found you in, in a podcast, 
and um, saw you holding sticks in your picture, immediately had to come check you out. Um, his name's um, Zach, uh, Zach Dark, I believe. Uh, Zach, oh man, I, I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in the description, but I know his first name's um, Zach, okay? So, um, oh, Zach Darcy, that's what it is, Zach Darcy. Um, so if you look up Zach Darcy, um, he has, I think, like 25, um, actually, no, he's one of the ones that has more like 80 subs right now. Um, it's not about the subs and that stuff, because if you look at some of the best drummers, the really, really good drummers, don't have that many subs for whatever reason. My thinking is that, you know, most of the people that have a lot of subs are the ones that are doing covers. Um, because people look for that song, you know, of the title of the song, and then the drumming video up of the cover comes up too, um, so people are more easily found that way. Um, not knocking playing to covers at all, that's phenomenal, it's great training, I love watching them, I love watching how people, you know, um, go about attempting playing the covers, um, and the different styles they use and all that, but just saying that, um, you know, some channels have different, you know, feels and different ways that they play to those things. And, um, you know, if you kind of check out some of their channels, you'll see a lot more original compositions where, you know, it takes, you know, to be able to play drums for five to ten minutes straight with no click track, with no backing track, with no song going on, that kind of stuff, stay in time, create, compose, um, that kind of stuff. Um, it takes a little bit, you know, of, of playing in a different way um, than going off of what you're hearing the whole time because you're creating everything that you hear. So um, I really like his channel. Um, in addition to uh, the, the channels that I love that are cover channels. So, um, you know, not knocking that by any means, but what I'm just saying is that, you know, it kind of is a different feel for when you see channels that are, you know, original compositions and things that are played in that sense versus people playing parts that have already been created. So that's what I mean, is that, you know, people playing parts of, Oh, well, I hear, you know, this drummer playing in, I don't know, I'll just choose a band, um, Imagine Dragons or something like that. And then instead of, you know, they'll play the exact parts that the drummer for Imagine Dragons has already come up with rather than composing their own uh, songs and, and structures and that kind of thing. So that's what I mean. I, I'm not saying that it's bad by any means. Some of my favorite stuff is the cover channels. Um, but Zach Darcy, um, thank you so much for su subbing to my channel. Um, and if you guys can please go check him out. He has some amazing stuff on there. One of the things I like um, that he has on there the most, he wrote uh, a song for his mom called uh, Boom Tap. And uh, it's because his mom got him into playing drums in the first place. And so he wrote a full composition and he spoke on top of it in a poly polyrhythmic manner, um, in addition to creating his own grooves with it. So um, that's just what I mean by, you know, different strokes for different folks. And uh, I highly recommend people go check out his channel. And uh, just to review, if people haven't already, please, please go check out Just Drums, Just Drums, Spiro Drums, um, uh, there was another new one and I'll put that in the description um, uh, Marcus uh, uh, Marcus Marcus something I'm so sorry guys I, I'm having a brain fart because I don't have them written down but I'll put them in, in the description okay Spiro drums Spiro he will teach you so many things that will improve your drumming drastically I promise that okay Check out Spiro. Um, check out Wheelin Drums. Wheelin Drums. He has instruction that everything's written out. He goes through it. He has a click being played. 
Um, he approaches it in uh, a methodical manner from beginner to intermediate to advanced. I can't recommend Whelan drums enough. Steven Whelan. His channel is just fantastic, okay? Then we've got Eric of Drum Attic. Man, what a, just a brother. He and I uh, chat on the side. We talk about drumming things. Um, really fantastic um, channel. And he's one of the ones uh, that I was talking about earlier. He's a, a mostly cover channel. And he's one of my favorite channels. So not knocking you know any cover channels by any means. I'm just saying that there's kind of a different uh, approach in the way that people play in their channel and the parts that they play versus um, other channels. Uh, for instance, you know, mine where I'm doing more just creating compositions um, and playing things like that. Um, sometimes I will play to a song, um, but I usually, you know, like I played in that pogo song that was... One what the pattern is. But the way I made it different was... So I just added some pea soups in there and some, some rolls, you know. flavors to it, that kind of thing. But now this is a super long video, so bye guys. Love you. Happy drumming. Um, so Spiro, Wheeling Drums, Just Drums, Eric at Drum Attic. Oh, Brian Corey. Gotta check out Brian Corey. Brian Corey um, and um, Zach Drums. Zach drum, Zach's Drums. So Z-A-X drums, Zach's drums, um, and then, um, you, you know, I'll put more in, in, in the description, but, uh, Drumman 190, Drumman 190, another great channel, so, just so I don't have this keep going on and on and on, um, you know, but if you want to check out some world-class drummers, then Forrest Rice, Mason Guidry, and... Those are some of the less known ones. And then, um, you know, we've got all the big ones too, which you guys probably already know about. So if I could recommend two that most people don't know about that are really, really phenomenal drummers, Happy Ameda, H-A-P-P-Y-I-M-A-E-D-A. -P -P -E -E Happy Ameda. He's fantastic. Forrest Rice. Fantastic. Um, and then and the, what I already mentioned. So um, I'll try to put some more in, 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 the, uh, in the description. All right, guys. Love you. Bye.